eight year career of uh, many countries in Europe, what would you say would be your wildest overseas story? Um, my last year in Hungary um, was when the socioeconomic issues between Ukraine and Russia actually were starting to heat up. Um, this was the time, I think it's called um, Crimea. Mm -hmm. Crimea, which Crimea was, yeah, the Crimea invasion, yep. Yep, which was like uh, at the time, Ukraine is explaining it to me um, almost like we would do like the Virgin Islands. That's basically how they explain it. It's, it's US territory. It's a great spot to go for vacationing and things like that, but it was Ukrainian territory, which I guess Russia was in the process of taking over. Again, I go back to me not being up to date on the news and things like that because I was so laser focused on basketball. Um, but one of my Ukrainian teammates had reached out and was like, can I come and live with you? I'm in the process of like basically smuggling myself and my wife out of the country. So I'm like, what do you mean? And I, I, I wasn't fully understanding, like, what was he saying? He was like, well, I'm going to come later. I just need to get my wife out. Um, I'm putting her in the trunk of a friend of mine's car. They're going to get to cross the border. Once that happens, like, she's going to take a train, a bus, something along those lines, um, which ended up happening. Like, that happened. Um, he calls me, like, in at night we still had our two practices the next day i go hey he's like she's in budapest at which is the capital of hungary um standing like a hostel for now can you go get her out of practice so after practice budapest was like four hours for me i go i get uh practice i drive four hours pick up my teammate's wife who ends up staying in my place for probably like two weeks um, while all this stuff was like kind of boiling over, he never showed up. Um, but which was scary because some days we're not getting communication. You don't know what's going on. And at the time, you know, because she would watch some of the news on her laptop and things like that. And you would see it was like civilians and military going back and forth with each other. So normal people like you and I, like being out in the street hiding behind cars, shooting at like the military, um, which was really scary to me. Two weeks later, she ends up like, hey, can you take me to the bus station? I'm, I'm, I got a spot to live in Croatia. I kind of never asked any questions. She was just on a bus to Croatia. So that was like one of the craziest stories and just kind of makes you appreciate America and you know the liberties that we have here in this country. Um, Cause that, that was, even though I wasn't directly going through it, like I wasn't the one being smuggled out of a country or anything like that. It was really scary on a day-to-day -day basis, kind of nervous about what was going to happen, what was going to happen with her husband. Um, you know, every time he didn't answer the phone, like, or his Facebook messages or, you know, over in Europe, they use MSN and, and um, WhatsApp a lot. Like anytime that stuff wasn't going through, you know, obviously you're thinking the worst, um, which, which wasn't the case, but, you know, that was that was a pretty scary situation. Hello and thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like and you can watch more videos over here. Uh, you can also click subscribe over here so you're notified when we have new content here on Expat Hoops.